Hey everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to be talking about a British singer-songwriter by the name of Ian Gom. Now, of course, some people are going to go, Ian Gom, who's that? Well, let me tell you who he is. He used to be in a band from about 70 to 74 called Brinsley Schwartz. And one of the other main songwriters in the band was Nick Lowe. So Ian Gom and Nick Lowe co-wrote a song together for Brinsley Schwartz, and that song was called cruel to be kind nick lowe later re-recorded it solo and had a big hit with it in 1979 about that same time ian gom also scored a hit with a song called hold on now a lot of people say hold on there's a lot of songs called hold on but the minute they hear the song they go oh i know that song i know that song uh because it's such a great song but he's a great singer songwriter completely totally underrated so we're going to start this show off by starting with his solo career like I said, there is a Brinsley Schwartz box set right here. And in fact, I've done a commercial for my channel, not one of these videos, but more of a commercial promoting this release. Uh, and uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll put a link in the description box below so you can watch that. And that's Ian Gom's early years. Now, he started his career before this. He was in the 60s. He was in several bands in the UK. Uh, I don't know if anyone ever recorded anything, but uh, by the time he got to Brinsley Schwartz, he was writing songs right there with Nick Lowe. And a lot of great Brinsley Schwartz songs were in Gom songs. But after the band split in 75, he went on a solo career. His first album came out in 1978. And this is the Japanese pressing, and it is called Summer Holiday. Uh, there's the Obi strip. Of course, it's shrink wrap, so I didn't want to ruin the strip there. Uh, but this came out in 1978. Now, a lot of people may not be familiar with this cover because when the album was released in the US the following year, it had this cover. Now, of course, this particular one is called Summer Holiday, but the album was actually called Gom with the Wind when it came out in America. So a lot of you may be familiar with this cover, but it's called Gom with the Wind. It's essentially the same album, uh, maybe a track or two mixed around, but it's just full of great pop songs. He's coming from the same place that Nick Lowe was, you know, a blending of, of everything from, you know, American pop to roots rock to, you know, 50s rock and roll to, you know, a lot of British influences and just mixing them all together. And the song Hold On was very much kind of like in the same vein as uh, Cruel to Be Kind. But he was also very different too, you know, Hooked on Love, 24 Hour Service, uh, Another Year, Chicken Run. These are all great songs that are on Summer Holiday and Gone with the Wind. It's just a great pop album. Some people called him Power Pop at the time, but I think that's sort of maybe pushing it a little bit. It's just more like just great guitar pop uh, or, or, or British pop. He should have had a lot more hits. I used to spend hours under the headphones listening to the first album so many times. You know, when you're a lonely kid and you don't have a girlfriend and all, and all your friends are out with their girlfriends or families, whatever, you just put on the headphones and you just slide away. And uh, uh, Ian Gom, uh, Gom with the Wind was the version I had at the time, uh, was just one of those great albums that I connected with. And then later on, I found out that the album was called Summer Holiday. So I bought a version of that too. Uh, but in 1981, he released his second album and that was called What a Blow. And this is the UK cover. The American version was you know, a different ball of wax. Same title, completely different album cover, as you can see right there. You know, they made it look more new wave there. And they took some songs off of the British one and added some different songs. So it's got kind of a different feel. They both have a very different feel. You know, this is like you know, a great singer-songwriter, very mature. Uh, you know, he's not going with the new wave flow. He's really walking his own path. It continues in the same vein as Gone with the Wind slash Summer Holiday. But it also touches on different styles as well. You're going to hear, you know, like a thumping beat on a song or two. That's not, it's not quite disco, but it's going in that direction. He's letting a lot more soul into the music. He does a cover version of the song uh, Slow Dancing, which I think was a hit for, what, Johnny Rivers? Uh, and uh, I think that was actually written by Jack Temption. Uh, when he was in the band The Funky Kings. And then Jack Temption later went on to co-write songs uh, with uh, Glenn Fry and everything. But this is a, a, another wonderful album. And of course, I sunk into this one too. Headphones probably would listen to it twice a day for a few months and just a great pop record. This CD here adds bonus tracks. So essentially this disc has all the songs that were on both the American 
and the British version. And that's online. It was also released on airmail in Japan, I think with the same track listing. I have to track that one down eventually. But In Gone, What a Blow was the second album. It came out in 1981. Both of those were released in the U.S. Unfortunately, nothing else by In Gone was released in the U.S., which is a shame because Village Voice that came out in 1982 is another great collection of songs. This is kind of a right in between the first and second album. It isn't as varied as What a Blow was, uh, but at the same time, uh, he's matured, he's moving forward, uh, and there's some just great, wonderful songs on this. I mean, I'm in a heartache, uh, Love is Gone, uh, Murder in the Night, just really, really cool songs. I really like this album a lot. Of course, I just delved into this thing, listened to it on headphones for years and years. Now, four years later, he put out an album called Images, and that's right there. And that album, I never, I don't think I ever saw it in the bins. It was just an import only. Uh, but I eventually tracked it down on CD. But that album actually came out on a few different uh, titles. Uh, Images, I believe, may have been the first title. And What Makes a Man Uh is another title of that album. And that is the fourth Ian Gom album. This one's very, very different. Um, it's still got the same classic, great Ian Gom pop songwriting you know he hasn't lost that at all but it sounds like he recorded a lot of it himself on keyboards at home and maybe these were going to be demos that he was eventually going to flesh out but it's all sort of like primitive synthesizers there is guitar on there and there are some tracks that have the keyboards turned down but i think it was too much of a shock for some listeners to go from his great guitar fueled uh songs to stuff that was basically you know a one-man band keyboards and and everything and I enjoy it because I'm a fan of keyboard pop and stuff. So this may not be the perfect gateway into Ian Gom's career uh, if you are not a fan of synthesizers and stuff, but if you're a fan of great songwriting, he's your man. It took another 11 years before he put out the album called Crazy For You. This came out in 1997. It's another collection of great pop songs. And this is, again, more mature. He's not you know, trying to sound like, hey, I'm 17 or I'm 21 and, you know, uh, I, I play rock and roll. He's just settling in, writing these great little pop songs. Sure, he's relying on some keyboards, but they're mixed down on these songs and, you know, the guitars and stuff are mixed more up. So, you know, the keyboards are not really intrusive if that's what you're afraid of. Uh, again, I love keyboards and I love the fact that this guy's putting out great music and he's doing it any way that he can. And, another great collection of songs on this album he actually re-records cruel to be kind of course the song that he co-wrote with nick lowe uh a different arrangement different sound but still great song and uh that is the album there crazy for you came out in 1997 took another five years before he put out the album called rock and roll heart and this is another fine collection but this is this is him kind of stripping back everything to its basics. It's almost a, a Americana album, uh, or as I stated in another video, British Chicana. Uh, it's, you know, it's got pedal steel guitar in there, a lot of acoustic. The song structures are very much inspired by the music that inspired him. So a lot of fifties music, uh, rock and roll hearts, the name of the album and rock and roll is the heart of this album. He's not rewriting rock and roll songs. You know, you're not going to hear, Oh, that's blue suede shoes or, Oh, that's uh, uh great balls of fire. It's nothing like that at all. It's more just laid back, almost country type, uh, Americana. And, uh, but with these great little hooky melodies and uh, it's very simple, but it's very heartwarming and it's, it's wonderful. Rock and Roll Heart by Ian Gom. This came out in the year 2002. Now, before I go on any further, there's a compilation called Hold On, the very best of Ian Gom. And the best of the albums I've talked about already are all combined on this. And, uh, you know, if you want to get a nice uh, overview of his career, but I would say, you know, definitely stick with the albums. Uh, and especially if you're going through the used vinyl bin, you're probably going to find the first two, if not the first three, fairly easy. Uh, but still, uh, this is like a good primer, a good gateway into his career. Hold on, the very best of Ian Gom. The final album I'm going to talk about today comes eight years after the release of Rock and Roll Heart. And this is one of his best albums. It is a collaboration with a American-born singer-songwriter by the name of Jeb Loy Nichols. Now, Ian Gom has been living in Wales for 
I don't know, close to 40 years, 50 years now, maybe. And Jeb Lloyd Nichols is an American uh, Americana folk singer, country singer, songwriter. And he moved to Wales and they actually got together and they recorded this album. It is called Only Time Will Tell. And they trade off vocals and it is so relaxed and it's so inspiring to hear these guys that love to sing and perform with each other. And it's 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 really, really, really a, a warm and inspiring release. And they do a version of Hooked on Love there as well, which is off of the very first uh, Ian Gom solo album, as well as being a Brinsley Schwartz track. And that is really a fantastic album. You should definitely check it out. Now, there's more available by Ian Gom, but I believe it's all digital. If you go to his Bandcamp page, which I'm going to put in the description box, you're going to be able to find stuff. This is a singer-songwriter that is completely overlooked. His catalog has so much great material. In fact, what I've done is I've put together a medley featuring a few songs from each of those albums that I talked about. And the medley is about six minutes long, and uh, it'll show you what he's all about. So just sit back, relax, give this a listen, and I will see you on the other side.
It. I hope this inspires you to check out the music of Ian Gom. It's really, really worth your while. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, ring that bell for future notifications. And until the next time, remember me. I'm Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie.